Uh, Philadelphia was known for, is known for American Bandstand. It's the birthplace of American Bandstand and all those teenage dancing shows in the afternoon. Well, the progression of that in Philadelphia was in the summertime, they had uh, summertime on Steel Pier in Atlantic City, where they would do a broadcast of uh, people dancing, teenage dancing to the, whatever the current you know, rock and roll music was. So Sag Pal and I decided to go to Atlantic City, and we were going to dance for the show. Gay people had a right to dance just like anybody else. So we were on Stale Pier, and Ed Hurst was the announcer of the show, uh, and he saw us dancing, and he said, Get those faggots off the floor! So um, to protest that, we decided to disrupt that station's uh, newscast. It was 1972. We were standing outside the television station, and I can remember my heart being a little, beating a little fast uh, and being a little nervous. I had never done anything like this before. And we noticed that there was a guard outside and we needed to create some type of diversion to get him out of the way. Uh, we knew where we were going because we had looked at the station blueprints. And all we had to do was get the guard out of the way and we felt we would be able to do what we needed to do. So. Uh, we had a guy pretend there was a fire, scream fire, 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 a, a few feet away from the door. And as the guard went out that side, we went in this side. And we got in. Uh, we found our way to right outside the doors of the studio uh, and waited. Our timing was so the newscast would go on and we would be able to burst into the studio. So we heard the, uh, the action news, da da, 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 and the announcer said, and tonight's big story. We opened the door, stormed onto the set, um, live on camera. Uh, so everybody in, at that time, Philadelphia was watching this because they were the number one news station. I have no memory of what we said. Probably something like, um, gay people protest your bigotry. Um, you know, uh, I'm sure it was something of that sort. We made sure we got gay in there as much as we possibly could. That was the key idea, is to make sure the audience knew we were gay. That was the only thing counted. We knew that there would be at least 600,000 people, if not more, watching this. And we wanted them, for the first time, to hear the words gay. Um, we would not leave the station. Uh, I'm sure they were willing to let us go, but uh, we wouldn't. We kept screaming. Uh, they had us arrested which was our goal. Uh, and the police came and booked us and let us out. Uh, I must admit that I am still to this day shocked by the reaction. Uh, the following morning, uh, it was the front page of all three of the city's newspapers. When I say the front page, it was huge pictures, huge headlines. Philadelphia Daily News put it on their entire cover. It was the biggest news story that ha local news story that happened, um, and that really showed me that the theory would work, that we would get to Americans because from that morning on, the phone would not stop ringing. And who was calling? All the radio talk shows. Philadelphia was washed in gay liberation. I think it follows a pattern of my life uh, where I knew that there was nothing wrong with who I was. I got to the point where I realized that the media, the camera, is where it's at. And you got to do it live. And you will get to the people. And we noticed that from the first one. And we realized it immediately. Uh, the reaction was so outrageous. So we thought, why not do this on a national scale? And that's how the campaign against the networks began.